Welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast. You're in the right place if you're a growth-seeking being who acknowledges the challenges and delights of your humanity on the path to an ever more conscious life. If you want to feel inspired to love and accept yourself, to feel free to be and express you in all your brilliance, if you want to truly value yourself and others and feel energized and alive both at home and in the world, then sit back and take a breath as you explore and grow the brilliance of your beautiful human self with your host, the father of non-personal awareness and creator of the MPA process, Joel Young. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast with me, Joel Young. We are at episode 31, and I'm so delighted that you're here, that you're choosing to spend this time with me. If you've just found us here at the Be A Brilliant Human podcast, then uh, you are in a wonderful place, and I'm really glad you found me. And if you're back again after uh, listening before, again, you'll know I always love to honor my regulars. Um, I do absolutely appreciate the the privilege that it is that you would uh, put me in your ears for a, um, around half an hour a week. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button wherever, wherever you're listening to this. And if, uh, remember that I'm always open to some feedback from you. If you're feeling particularly generous, why not head over to iTunes and give me a review or give the podcast a review. Uh, that would be fantastic. And also on the podcast website, which is www.beabrillianthuman.com, you can uh, hit the message button and leave me a voice message. You might even end up on the show if you do that. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? And um, yeah, also, if you like this show, go ahead and tell somebody. It's great to have word of mouth. You can't beat someone saying to you, oh, I heard this brilliant podcast called Be A Brilliant Human. <laughs> Why don't you go check it out? Word of mouth is a powerful thing. So what is it all about today on episode 31? We are talking motivation. Thing is, I've been hearing a lot of people sort of sharing how the, sort of the lockdown days are kind of rolling into one, um, and it's sort of hard not to melt into kind of a dirge. You know, I, I've certainly felt that way at times. You know, over the last few weeks, and you know, here in the UK, there's there's lots of people have have been furloughed. The sun's been out, and they're kind of chilling in their garden. And there's it sort of a weird kind of chill out holiday vibe. It, it's kind of just in the ethers, and in spite of the kind of severity of what's going on, and you know, for thousands of people and who are directly affected by sort of COVID-19, uh, hence the weirdness, I guess. You know, and I'm often saying that we're in a sort of collective bath of energy. And it can be easy in that case to sort of slip into the the, the general energy that's around, which, which is fine <laughs> if that's what you're called to do. However, if like me, you've, you've still got lots of work to do, um, you know, or it leaves you feeling out of sorts or, or like you're letting yourself down in some way, uh, that's not so great, is it? And as I'm hearing sort of many folks saying that there's there's projects that they thought they'd finished with, in quotes, all that extra time, um, but they just aren't getting done and and that's not feeling great. And they're asking, how the heck do I stay motivated? In this episode, I wanted to really answer that question. And of course, if you're doing fine in lockdown, you know, there's always times in life where, you know, a motivational block can strike. So I've got you covered too today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover what I call the standard motivational advice. Um, You know, I'm going to give my particular thoughts on those. But then really more importantly today is we're going to go and take a deeper look at what's often really going on, not just in lockdown, Um, underneath the surface. And I'm going to give you some practical, actionable steps. Actually, I'm going to give you three methods to help you get inspired, get motivated, feel great, and get that shit done. Sounds good? All right, let's dive into it. Okay, so if you you Google it, if you Google, you know, how to stay motivated, there's kind of four things that are repeatedly say, said by everybody. That, that's why I call them the, the standard <laughs> standard advice. The four things are take a break, leverage uh, sort of positive or inspiring relationships, uh, try something or learn something new. And there's, of course, the classic, just do it. <laughs> just get on with it. Self-discipline. So, I mean, the reason this is standard advice is because, you know, often those things are actually enough to do the trick. And I've certainly used all of these, you know, with great effect at different times. And I have, but I've also found that there's times when they just don't work and they can even end up sort of simply being deeper distractions or 
procrastinations. But I want to go through those standard responses, if you like. I want to expand a little on them, give you my experience and and maybe sort of my tips or, or views on how they go. And then we'll get into the deeper issues for, you know, when they don't really cut it. All right. So the first one is take break. Well, this is true because sometimes, especially if you like me, like an entrepreneur, you can you can get on that hamster wheel. You know, you've got a project, you just drive yourself into it, and you kind of get to that burnout phase. And and it's you know, I'm pretty good these days at, at really regulating the my rest time, my stopping time. And rest is really important. It's like you know, the body tells you there's an in breath and an out breath. You know, the the in breath would be the that work part, and the out breath is just the letting go, the resting time. And of course, there's different kinds of rest. I mean, perhaps it's a, a Netflix binge day, <laughs> or maybe about it's about dedicating some time to a hobby. I mean, for me, it's about getting out in nature with my camera or or making music. And and yes, I confess, I'm not above Netflix binges either. That's that also works for me at times. I guess my top tip on the take a break thing is is don't half rest. You know. If you're going to do it, do it fully. Give yourself full permission to absolutely, you know, fully go for it. So if you're going to, like, I need I need time with Netflix. So just give yourself full permission. If you don't give yourself permission and half your mind is on the work you're supposed to do, you might as well not do it. It's like it doesn't actually, you don't get the full effect. It's like you don't half breathe out, do you? <laughs> you try half breathing out. It just, it doesn't work. You need a full out breath. Then you, you've got the space for the full in breath, right? That's how it works. So if you're going to take a break, then then do it fully. All right, the next piece of standard advice is leveraging positive or inspiring relationships. So, I mean, sometimes it's just great to, to arrange a call with someone, you know, who ticks the inspirational box for you. You know, having just, just having a conversation with someone like that can kind of get you out of a rut and back into the groove. Now, the key here, as far as I'm concerned, is to choose the right friend or, or maybe a mentor for that matter. I mean, you know what it's like. You know, we all have friends that are great for listening and sympathizing, but that might not be the best help for you in, in this situation. And you probably also know some people who are able to hold you accountable or hold you to a higher standard. Just sort of people who understand your dreams and your goals and, and maybe are even willing to sort of process you through your resistances. And these are the kind of people that you want to reach out to. And of course, if you've if you have a coach like me, then you've already you know invested, um, well, made a sound investment, I should say, in this kind of support, and that can be absolutely invaluable. So the next one that you hear is is try something new or learn something new. Again, this can be great because trying something new can can just re-inspire you. I mean, it's learning something new can give you a different perspective or or insights you know, into whatever is your main thing. It's like doing something else gives you a new take on what you, you normally do, the thing that you've kind of burnt out on, if you like. Um, and also it, it can activate a different mode. You know, we, we all have waves when we, we do the same thing day in, day out, you know, where it can be feel great and then it goes dirty. You know, we can become a bit desensitized. So putting your mind into learning mode with something new can actually put you back in learning mode in relation to your main thing, whatever it is that thing that you do. Uh, which in turn gives you the possibility of opening new doors in your mind in relation to that. And again, that's going to re-inspire you and or give you the spin that you need to get back on track. And the final one is the just do it. Just get on with it. <laughs> uh, or let's put that under the sort of self-discipline bracket. Now, if, if you've listened to this podcast or followed me for a while, you'll know that I'm generally really not a fan of forcing things. And the thing is with self-discipline, it can often manifest as getting the whip out on yourself. And that, that can be so counterproductive. But there's no denying that sort of a judicious use of willpower and self-discipline has its place. And, and sometimes it's just about sort of geeing up that sort of collapsed part of ourselves, um, you know, which is in, the, in a very unhealthy mode. So that sort of pep talk can, can work. And on the positive side, you know, effective self-discipline is often about breaking things down and systematizing the process. I mean, I'm an avid list maker. My drawer, my kitchen drawer here is, I'm in the kitchen now, my kitchen drawer here is full of cut-up card packaging. You know, I literally call them list cards, and that's something that I inherited from my mum. You know, and I usually have a handful of list cards on the go. I mean, I love it for, for getting things out of my head 
and they chunk down into bite-sized pieces. And there's something about physically crossing something off a list. It's sort of a, a positive in reinforcement that you've done something. Um, you know, so and, and just getting things moving in a small way can be a big part of re-motivation. It can burst that bubble of stuckness and move you into that flow state. And of course, making lists is just one way to do that. And the point is, at times, giving yourself a good talking to or, or creating some chunk down system can be a good strategy. You know, it's all about finding, you know, what works for you. OK, so, so the question is, then, what's going on when these things don't work and you end up feeling potentially more frustrated with yourself? You know, it's it, that sucks. <laughs> Let's look a little deeper. Well, it's my view that, you know, it's a matter of the absence of inner congruence. In other words, for some reason, you're out of alignment with the task. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the task you want to do is the wrong choice, although sometimes it can mean that. But more likely, you know, you have conflicting inner stories. And of course, sometimes in life, you know, there isn't in real terms a choice, like if you have to do a tax return. <laughs> There's a deadline on it, you know, and, um, you know, it's, it's, core you know a lack of motivation normally indicates that you you don't have an inner reason that works for you. you you haven't found your resonant why you know why you would choose to do it um you know a why that rings your bells that hits the right notes for you um i mean it could be that instead of that you have a scary or demotivational story for example you feel like you know your effort won't help you achieve your goal or or the goal isn't worth the trouble or it could be that the issue is more on the other side of that equation. So you're just not clear. You don't have a vision or a picture of the outcome that really inspires you. I mean, if you think about it, artists normally like see the image of their creation and it's, you know, it's an image that inspires them to get their brushes out and paint, paint, paint. Um, you know, and it might not turn out exactly as they saw it, but it's enough to get them started and keep them going to that completion. And of course, sometimes it's not a vision per se. It's, it's, it can be a grand idea that inspires active exploration. You know, and throughout that, you know, a vision can unfold. So going back to self-discipline for a moment, when it comes to your why, it's worth looking at, you know, where that fits in here, you know, in terms of, you know, where you'll need to, something to keep going rather than just getting started as well. So generally speaking, Discipline tends to be an or else approach. In other words, discipline is often framed in a way that to be effective, it needs strong enough consequences. For example, with the taxes, if you don't get it in on time, you'll be fined. Or if you, you know, if you don't meet your work deadline, then your boss is going to go ballistic. Maybe you will let the team down and heck, you might even get fired. And the truth is, you know, this this can be a motivational force, but it is force. And as I said, I'm not a fan of force, mainly in this context, because it only really works temporarily. It's not sustainable. And usually at some point, if you're using force, our, our hard wiring for freedom kicks in and those resistances surface. So while self-discipline or consequential approaches can definitely get things moving, in order to keep flowing, to keep genuinely motivated in a sustainable way, you need to go from an or else to a and then empowerment mindset. In other words, your why is what makes it self-sustaining precisely because it's your why. <laughs> it's not your boss's why. It's not tax man's why. It's, it's your why. You know, it's self-empowerment here. So I'm going to offer you some powerful questions to ask yourself that can help help you access your why. Um, but a great place to start, you know, it's well worthy of some in the investigation is to look at, you know, what are the core things that you care about? And there'll be things that you've always cared about. They're, they've always been there. And in there are often the clues to your answers. Think of it as a, a reservoir of juicy whys, you know. Um, OK, so let's get into those power questions. And uh, I want to help you find a congruent, juicy why uh, when you feel devo demotivated or stuck in a rut. So I'm going to look at three ways to go about this, because as ever, different approaches will work with different people at different times. The first up is what I call the direct method. Blindingly obvious, this one, but sometimes directness is all you need. You simply need to ask yourself, why do I want to do this? Why am I choosing this? You know, it can be as simple as that. You know, and as ever with these questions, I encourage you to, to think of it as inquiry. 
which means, you know, you ask the question and rather than seek the answer with your mind, you let go and let the answer find you. That allows your inner wisdom to kick in rather than in sort of invoking the mind that's already caught up in some mental loop or limitation. And as you practice inquiry, you'll learn to feel the difference. So that's the first. And it's just so simple. Just ask yourself directly, why do I want to do this? Why am I choosing this? All right. So next up, I'm calling it the Aikido method. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out into a field and practice martial arts. No, the reason I call this the Aikido method is because the essence of Aikido, as I understand it, and I'm by no means an expert, and the way, but the way I mean it here is it's going. It's about going with the force that's coming your way and turning it to your advantage. A bit like when you catch a cricket ball and, you know, rather than holding your arms and hands rigid, which hurts like hell, by the way, if you've ever done that, and usually as you drop in the ball, you go with the direction and energy of the ball as it comes to you, which effectively creates a soft landing. You know, not strictly an Aikido example there, but you get the idea. Now, now this method uses a bit of reverse psychology or reverse tracking, you could say. Um, it starts with looking at the resistance, it meets it, then turns it around to something positive. Now, there's three steps to this one, the Aikido method, so this is probably the most detailed one. Um, the first step is to ask yourself, what do I feel when I think about doing this? So this is going to help you access the emotional flavor of the resistance, you know, the demotivational feeling, you could say. So it's going to be something yucky. Or, or if your answer is, I feel ecstatically excited, then, you know, why the heck are you doing the exercise in the first place? You're already motivated. In fact, you're probably cracking on with it as I speak. Or if you are getting that answer and you are feeling demotivated and having the answer, then you're probably not being truly honest with yourself, in which case, you know, try the question again and be really honest with yourself. But more, more likely, the answer will be something like lethargic, tired, bored, angry, drained, that kind of thing. Now, this is great because remember, it's about meeting yourself where you are. So, of course, next step is to go with the energy. Step two is ask yourself, if this feeling had words, what would it say? So this is inviting it to flow. Uh, you actually might be amazed. If you start asking that question, if, if this feeling had words, what would it say? You'd be amazed at the wisdom that's held in the feeling when you actually give it space to breathe and express itself. Now, what you're doing here is, is being open to hearing what the real issue is. So ultimately, you know, in the end, you can address it. And remember, you know, a lot of our stuckness stays stuck because it stays in the shadow. In other words, it stays hidden from us. We don't really look at it. And, and this feeling probably has the keys to, to unlock the cage. You know, it might say something as simple as, I feel like I have to and I don't want to. <laughs> the point here is that you're inviting that flow, the, the soft landing for the cricket ball. That's going back to that analogy. Um, so but whatever it says, you know, it, it may or, or may not at first seem like wisdom or it points to any resolution. But the thing is, it sets you up for step three of the Aikido method, which is to open a dialogue. I literally mean once you've got words flowing from the demotivated feeling, you can begin a conversation where you can acknowledge it, hear it, start working with it to find, you know, that all important self-sustaining why, you know, a reason to move forward that works for it and for you. Now, I get it. If you've never done anything like this before, that's probably going to sound a bit strange, you know, talking about it and you after all, isn't it all you? Oh, my God, my brain's exploding. Well, yes, but, but don't overthink it. Um, it just takes a minor leap of imagination. And, and trust me, it's a powerful technique. And I use it all the time with great success with both myself and with my clients. Uh, and if it helps, just think of it as parts of you. And there's a part that's in resistance and a part that wants to move forward and get things done. And opening a dialogue you know, between them takes you from a state of sort of bullish trench warfare to, to actively seeking common ground and you know, peaceful and effective forward motion. And trust me, that there, there is common ground there. You know, there's something that will work for both those parts, both parts of you. In fact, it will work for all parts of you. I mean, dialogue is by nature a dynamic state. So again, you're in movement, which is already better than a rut, right? So I guess my one guiding note for you here is, is to come from a place of tenderness, compassion, and understanding, married with an intention to find a solution. You know, and it's also, it's, it's vital to rise above the agenda of that part that wants to get shit done, okay? And what I mean by that is, is not to let that part of you slip into any kind of bullishness, you know, just go over it. You know? 
<laughs> not to come from there, but come from tenderness. You know, and if it gets tricky in that department, um, you know, you feel you're going around in circles. The one thing you can actually do is is invite an an inner mediator. You call it your higher self or your soul or you know whatever you call that part. But it's the part that has that capacity to see the bigger picture. You know, and, and also I should say on a practical level, it can be really helpful to do this dialogue on paper or or on a document if you like typing, like a journaling exercise. For me, I find that that writing it down keeps it clear or and certainly clarifies you know which part what part is speaking and what's being said. The thing here is to play lightly with it, but it's a great process, a great experiment, if you like. Um, And as ever, I I always love to know, you know, what was your experience with it? You you know, you can email me. It's joel at nonpersonalwellness.com. You can leave a message on beabrillianthuman.com or or contact me on social media. It's uh, I'm at Joel Young MPA in most places. MPA rocks on Facebook, just slash Joel Young on YouTube if you're there. Um, Just let me know, you know, what you experienced with that. All right, so that brings us to the last of our three ways to find your congruent why, which is what I'm calling the transcendence method. Okay, and again, <laughs> I'm not saying just get enlightened, dude. <laughs> no, no, this one's about finding, it's about finding a why that transcends the demotivational story or, or resistance by finding something that's bigger than that. Now, you can think of this as about being like like about risk versus reward, because often our resistance is based on a scary story, right? You know, a fear or some negative vision of the outcome. Remember, I gave that example that you you might feel like your effort won't help you achieve your goal or or the goal is not worth the trouble. Well, that picture is a picture of risk, you know, painted in very dark shades. But remember that the other side of risk is reward. And and this method, the transcendence method, turns up the reward factor. So literally you shift to a place where the potential rewards outweigh the risks. Now, if you've ever bought a lottery ticket, (laughs) you know what I'm talking about, right? You spend your two quid knowing full well that you might have just flushed it down the toilet (laughs) and set yourself up for disappointment as well. Uh, and even though you're well aware of that, you know, you the thought of 15 million quid in your bank account and the dreams you could fulfill with that, that, that totally transcends the risk, right? Um, you know, what we often do, you know, with the risk side of it is attempt to dismiss it or diminish it. You know, we go, oh, don't be so silly. Of course that won't happen. Um, you know, and I've noticed that the mind rarely responds well to being dismissed, dim, disminished, oh, I can't say it, dismissed, diminished or ignored. But I've also found that that it responds so much better to being acknowledged and offered a better alternative. And and that's what we're going to do in the transcendence method. So when you're feeling demotivated and you're aware there's a scary story or some risk involved, um, you know, that, that, that you're caught up in, just ask yourself, why would I choose to do this, even though my scary story might come true? Now, just to be clear, that isn't, why on earth would I be so stupid to do this when it's so damn risky? In fact, <laughs> that's probably what you're already doing at some level. Remember what I'm going for here is, is, is what is your why? What is the why that transcends the risk? So in the lottery example, what you've done, you know, is say, why would I spend two quid on a lottery ticket when the most likely outcome is I'll get nothing in return? And if you're buying that ticket, then on some level, you've painted a picture in your mind that gives you a reason to do that, that transcends the risk. You know, you've got your why without denying, dismissing or ignoring the risk. You're well aware of the risk, but the the picture in your mind of the 15 million quid is enough to, to, to outweigh the sense of risk. So you can keep things really simple and use that question as is. You know, it's phrased very generally, but we'll do the trick. Um, but you might want to tailor it to, to your specific situation. That can be a really good thing to do. So let's say, for example, you've been promising yourself, you, promising yourself you, you'd write that book, <laughs> but you feel unmotivated, you feel lackluster, you feel blocked every time you sit down to start it. Now, with a bit of inner reflection, you know, you realize that you're afraid and the fear that's looming and killing your vibe is, is that you'll go to all the effort, but it'll be rubbish and no one will read it. Okay, so with that awareness, you can ask the specific question. You can phrase it this way. Why would I choose to write this book, even though it may be true that it turns out to be rubbish and no one reads it? Now, if you really sit with that question, with that intention, you know, what's that powerful why, then you'll have a good chance of, of accessing that deeper why of, a why, again, a why that transcends the fear. 
So, and again, on these kind of things, it might be that your answer is is multi is a multi layered thing. It might not just be a simple, straightforward one line answer. Although, of course, it can be. It might be more like you know. Um, so, what would I say? <laughs> Why would I choose to do this, even though it might be rubbish and no one reads it? Well, it'll show me that I can commit and follow through for myself. And that's something that has the potential to transform my life and the possibilities I, I open up for myself. And it'll give me an amazing sense of faith in myself and my capabilities to follow through on my dreams. And even if it is rubbish, you know, you know, I'll learn so much about myself and about writing so I can write something better next time. And you never know, I might ace it right off the bat. So... <laughs> When an answer comes that, you know, connects, you'll feel it and, and you'll also feel inspired to take action. All right. So I wanted to finish up with a little bit on, on how to use the, this, the, the transcendence method, to sustain motivation when things get tough and how you can use it, you know, with really difficult and scary actions or decisions for that matter. <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to cover this because one place where demotivation, you know, because of a scary story tends to show up a lot is mid-project, especially those projects that are likely to have a, like a big impact on your life. Now, when you, when you follow your dream or set on a path based on some realization or a deep longing, you can often feel very inspired at the start. But there usually comes a point where the ground under you sort of starts to shift. It will let you know that there's going to be some dramatic shift. Um, you know, and it's it's the start of that essential chaos phase of change. And on top of feeling incredibly challenging, it can give birth to all sorts of terrifying stories about what will or won't happen if you continue. Now, interestingly here, the scary story in these kind of situations, um, you know, could be fears around success as much as failure, but still the fear can paralyze you and stop your progress. Now, the transcendence method actually is a great tool to help you find your, your sort of non-outcome based motivation and connect with something deeper. You know, the true motivation and drive that truly matters to you and it will inspire you regardless of those things. Now, you can slightly adjust the question to reflect that, you know, in this situation, it's about keeping going rather than getting started and ask yourself, why would I choose to keep going even though my scary story about it might be true? So I want to give you a few examples here. So maybe maybe you started your dream business, you know, but things are getting tough. So you can ask yourself, why would I choose to keep the faith and continue working on my business, even though it might fail at any time? Why would I choose to continue anyway? And again, the thing here is just to just sit down, let yourself be open and find an answer that you can, you know, genuinely connect with. So your answer might be because you know, giving my dream a chance is more important than success or failure. I want to experience living my passion. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is that, is, it, is that something? Is it COVID or did it tell me something about that particular one? Woo, I don't know. <laughs> All right. So or let's talk about a realization. Perhaps you've had a realization that um, pick a relationship on. So relationship is over for you. Maybe you realize that. Um, but there are lots of scary implications, the financial ones, aloneness. You know, I see a lot in the, of this in my practice. It's it's a common thing in a very challenging situation where you feel like, you know, you've, you've tried everything. The relationship just isn't working for you. Um, but it can be a really scary thing and it plagues your mind and you, you end up staying in that painful status quo. Maybe you even create fights, you know, you back and forth, but you never quite go through with what your heart knows is your truth. So in that kind of situation, you can use this question. You can say or ask it in this way. Why would I leave this relationship, even though it might create financial crisis? And there's no guarantee that my next partner will work out. Why would I choose to leave anyway? And again, you've got to find an answer that genuinely connects with you. But to give you an example of what that might be, it might be because live, you know, giving myself the chance of a fulfilling relationship experience is more important to me than financial security. And if you find that, you know, um, if you find that's your truth or whatever it is, it's your truth, that can be enough to really get you to to honor yourself by by really you know, going through with that to motivate you to actually do what it is your heart's calling you. So, you know, we talk about longing, maybe, maybe, you know, you long to speak to or some risky truth. Let's say you have to long for some risky truth. You want to speak it to, I don't know, your father, your mother, your lover, maybe even a friend. You know, and time and again, you're in a conversation 
Um, you see that potential moment. <laughs> I've been there myself with this one. You see that potential moment where you could finally speak your truth and your heart races and you so want to speak it, but that fear stops you and you kind of back away and end up feeling really shit about yourself inside. So in that kind of situation, you can ask yourself, why would I choose to speak this risky truth to my father, mother, lover, friend, even though they might get mad, not really listen, and maybe even reject me completely? Why would I choose to tell them anyway? And again, find that answer that you can gen genuinely connect with. For example, maybe it's because not speaking my truth is killing me. So the need to express myself overrides all possible outcomes. Okay. <laughs> So there was a lot in that, wasn't there? Well, I just want to say finding, finding that deeper motivation is going to give you sort of much greater strength to keep going when those sabotaging parts of you, you know, they've when they've got you on the run. And who knows? I always put this in. Who knows? Your scary sto story might turn out to be a load of old rubbish anyway. All righty then. Let's, let's wrap this one up. So... In a nutshell, in a nutshell, if you're feeling like demotivated, it can be really good just to try the standard advice. Let's take a break, uh, have an inspiring conversation with a friend or a mentor who understands your dreams and will hold you to a higher standard. You can try something or learn something new and different, or just apply some willpower and self-discipline, like chunk things down into steps that don't overwhelm you. But if those don't work or if they don't inspire you, then the chances are you haven't found your compelling and congruent reason why. And today, I gave you three methods to help you find that. The direct method, which is to simply ask yourself why you want to do this and why you're choosing this. The Aikido method, which is where you access your current dirgy feeling, have a dialogue with it, you know, and look to find a united inner purpose and inner reason why. And then there's the transcendence method, which helps you find a reason that transcends the fear that's paralyzing you. And of course, we talked about how to use that if, if you get stuck in the middle of a project, for example, and want to find that reason to keep going. Now, there are details of all of these in the show notes, which this week you will find at www.beabrianhuman.com slash 31. That's it for today. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to, to be with me here. Remember to subscribe, hit that share button, tell someone about it, all that wonderful stuff. As ever, I hope this has stirred you, touched you, and given you a perspective that helps you up your game in some form. There's me holding you to a high standard. Uh, <laughs> and again, if you like what you hear, go tell someone. And of course, if you want some one-to-one -one support from me, you can come and get that. Just have a look on my website. Uh, I can help you guide you to those deeper motivations and really get you moving. You'll find that www.joelyoungnpa.com slash sessions. And all that remains for me is to say a final thank you. And of course, as we always like to do, cue the moo. Mm hmm.